Okay, welcome back to part two of this series. Um, in this video, we're basically going to carry on from where we left off, which was creating the sort of innards of the progress bar. So now that we've appended um, our actual bit that moves, makes up the actual bar, um, we need to create the text, which is going to, um, well, we've already created it up here. That's creating the text element, or the element that's going to contain the text. But now we need to actually style it so that it appears in the right place and then add it to the page. So, in the same way as before, we're just going to set a few style properties. Um, the first one we're going to set is the margin um, at the top. Uh, because by default, um, well actually I'll just leave it and then show you what happens. Okay, so hopefully <laughs> that's not too confusing. But what we are going to set is the text align. So we'll do text.style.text align. Now notice here that um, the capital A, um, the CSS property for like text align is not that, it's text align like so and then you would do center like that. Um, however the dash in a JavaScript property is invalid so you replace any dash with a capital letter and that's the same. So we're going to set text align equal to center so that the text appears in the middle of the bra in, in, in the center of the progress bar. Um, we're also going to set the color so text style color spelt wrong equal to 111 which is like a very dark gray sort of color and we're also going to set the size so text style uh, text size equals 15 pixels okay and then we need to append that to our container as before um, so we do container dot append child uh, text. There we go. Now at the moment this is just an empty element. What we actually need to do is put some text inside of this text div. Because at the moment what we've got is essentially just that. Wait. So that would be the actual progress bar. And then we've got another one that would be the uh, text I can learn to type. So inside here, what we want to do is add a string that says 0% by default so that it looks sort of like a starting point. Um, and also, the 0% would match the 0% we gave the starting point for the progress bar. So, the way we do that um, is before we add it to the container, we add some text to the text div, if that makes any sense. So, we can do this in one line. Um, we can do text dot append child and then the element we want to add is going to be a new element I'm going to create it by using document um, create text node um, and the reason we use create text node instead of like just setting the inner HTML property is that create text node will escape any characters so say if for whatever reason you wanted to do something like I don't know this and you used the inner HTML method the browser would try to interpret this as a HTML tag. However, if you use create text node and append child, um, it'll just appear on the screen like that as text. So that's why we use create text node. Uh, and also, it's like the sort of more modern way to do things. In HTML, is a bit Internet Explorer-ish and a little bit old. Anyway, so by default, we want to set this to 0%. Um, and now we should, well, we'll almost be in a position to test this out. Um, because we've appended our text, so this is something that we should actually be able to see. Um, but before we can obviously do that, at the moment this is just a function definition, we actually need to call it. So what we're going to do now is make a little start on our main.js. So let's go across to that now, and what we need to do is have something run when the page has finished loading. So I'm going to use the window on load method for this. Probably worth pointing out, this is not the best way to do this. Um, however, there are quite a lot of browser issues with the other ways, um, so for the purposes of this video I'm going to keep it simple and just use this, because this works on pretty much all browsers. Uh, but it's worth looking into the alternatives. Um, just go on Google and search for like window on load, valid, or modern, or anything. Um, you should find, or alternative is probably a better word than those two, um, and you should find sort of information on what to do instead. But essentially, the window on load method um, is kind of fine, I mean it works, so let's just go with it for now. Anyway, what I'm going to do is use this method to have a function run when the page loads. 
So the window dot on load uh, property uh, on load is a property of the window. Um, when the page has finished loads it, loading, 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 the browser will try to call this as a function. So what we can do is define, uh, well, we can set this equal to a function that we create, and then the browser will call this when the page loads. So that's how we create a function in JavaScript, just by setting it equal to function, like that. Pretty simple. Um, and then inside here, we're going to call the progress bar that we've coded here, and um, well, have it, you know, do this stuff. So we're going to be doing this in sort of the object orientated style. Um, so far, there's been pretty much no difference to the standard way, um, but it's going to be a, there's going to be a function inside of here. So we need to use objects. So we need to create an object from that function. Um, so the way we do that is by using new, a new keyword. Um, and then we just do the name of the function, which is progress bar. And then we need to pass in the element which is going to contain the progress bar. Um, so we can get that by using document dot get element by ID, which I always spell wrong, so I think that looks right. And then this just takes one parameter, which is the ID of the element you're trying to get. Um, so that's this element that we want, and you can see this ID is set to progress bar wrap. So here we just use progress bar wrap with two S's. There we go. Um, and the reason we do this on page load, by the way, is that our scripts are included in the HTML here. So they are also processed here. So at this point, um, this element doesn't actually exist. So if we don't do this on page load, like we are with the window.onload thingy, um, this will return false because that element doesn't actually exist yet. So that's why we do it like that. Um, and also we want to assign this to a variable. So I'm just going to call this bar, put it equal to the new progress bar thing. Okay, so that's that done. Um, and we should be in a position now to give this a test and see how it goes. So just have a quick check over that to make sure it looks okay, which it does. Um, so now let's go across to our browser and hit refresh. And you can see that we have this 0% that has been appended down here. Um, so the problem is here, obviously, that that's now off the screen. So we need to move it up so that it's on the bar, not on the underneath it. Um, you could obviously style it to have it underneath if you wanted, but, you know, not the best, well, not the nicest sort of layout. I don't know. Anyway, so we need to move this up. So what we can do is just set a negative margin to the margin top, and that will just move it up. So that's what I was trying to explain earlier, but I thought that I'd probably wait a bit and do an example because it's a little bit easier. So anyway, what you just need to do here is set text style margin top equal to. Um, I've experimented a bit with this and sort of done it by eye without a calculator, um, but minus 26 pixels looks pretty much like it's in the middle. So if we just reload this once more, you can see that that has moved up and it's more or less central. In fact, I think it needs to be down a bit because if you highlight it, you can sort of see the whatever, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, now that's, uh, now that that's done, what we need to do is add a method to our progress bar object to allow people to actually set the um, percentage. So at the moment, all we've done is create this sort of pointless percentage and invisible box. So yeah. So what we're going to do is go back to our code. And now that we've set up our sort of progress bar up here, we can um, sort of use it essentially. So we're going to uh, set a property of this function or object, uh, which we do using the this keyword. So this um, set percentage, um, percentage, and this is going to be a function. So we'll set it equal to a function. The function is going to take one parameter, which is going to be the percentage. Is that right? Looks right. And then inside of here, we're going to uh, create a function which allows people to set the percentage that is shown on the bar. So the um, actual width is pretty easy because we can use percentage widths in CSS or styling, HTML, whatever you want to call it. So we can just do bar, which is this variable we created here. Um, so after you've added an element, to the page or to the to another element, you can still modify its styles using the same variable. So bar style width equals, and we're just going to trust that the 
user or developer or whatever has entered a correct percentage. So we're just going to say that you know like a number between zero and a hundred. If you enter like a negative width, it just looks weird. Um, and, you know, goes wrong <laughs> depending on what browser you're using. Um, as always with JavaScript, it acts completely differently. So avoid doing that if you can. Anyway, um, so we're just going to trust that the developer has set a sensible width, i.e., fifty percent. So we're going to set what they pass into this function as the actual width. Uh, so percentage, and then as well as this, obviously we don't just want width equals fifty. We want it to be fifty percent. So we just have to add on the percent character. So that should now work. Uh, obviously we haven't got a way to test this yet. Um, so let's do that now. So let's go to our main.js and we'll add an, an on click method to the 25% button to test this out. So let's just come down here. Um, so before we can actually add an element, add a, um, a function to be called when the button is clicked, we need to get the element, which is why I gave them all those unique IDs. So we can do this in the same way as we did before. So document get element by ID, and the, and the ID for the first one was set 25. And then from that, we can do onload equals function. And the same thing applies to this as does the window onload thing. Uh, sorry, not onload, that should be on click. Here we go. Fixed. No, that says clock. Fixed. Yes, good. Um, the same thing applies to this. There are slightly more bon modern ways to do this, uh, more standards compliant. Um, however, they're quite complicated and you know they don't all work. So you have to define a function which wraps around all of them. It's a bit of a mess. Um, anyway, let's not get too bogged down in that. Um, so inside our onClick method, we need to set the percentage. So we can call the um, method that we defined here set percentage equals function from this bar variable that we created from the new object okay so we just do bar set percentage like so and then we just pass in the percentage that we want to set so in this case 25 so now we should be able to test this out if we go back to our browser and hit reload we should be able to click the 25% button and you can see that the progress bar fills up to about here um, I should have picked a darker colour really, I'm not sure how well this is going to come out in YouTube small window, but there you go. You can see that it has worked, I'll have to do it once more. So, completely white, bit filled up to about a quarter. So yeah, there you go, that's that. Um, so we're going to leave this here, because it's come to quite a nice place to stop, and the video might be getting a bit too long, it's kind of hard to tell with my silly timer that is only in seconds. So there you go, thank you for watching, and come back with part 3, where we'll code the rest of our buttons, and I'll show you how to change the percentage that is actually shown, because 0% is obviously still wrong. So yeah, there you go, come back for part 2, and we'll carry on.